So it's basically the criteria that the examiners are looking for. Now there's a public and then there's the real what the examiners use, but the public rubric is very similar to the one that examiners use. Now that really identifies and really pinpoints what the examiners are looking for. So if your student can follow that and meet that criteria, then they should be able to get their score pretty easily. But right. if the teacher doesn't have any idea about this rubric, and I've met quite a few who don't know about this rubric, and I've also met a lot of students who had never seen it, even though they've spent thousands of dollars in an IELTS program, um, they've never seen it, that's where things go wrong. Okay, because what the teacher thinks is not what is the requirements of the exam. Really, I find that if you haven't really analysed that criteria, you don't really know what to teach. Okay, so if you're a teacher, a lot, and this is what I've noticed anyway with teachers who don't know anything about IELTS, is they just do a general, they think, okay, well, vocabulary, we just use normal vocabulary. You're just using everyday kind of vocab. But when you look at the criteria, it's very specific as to what kind of vocabulary you should be using. You know, even with the actual marking of the writing, I had a teacher who was marking the writing piece and just looking at the criteria as a general English scoring system. So they just looked at the grammar and they didn't look at the lexical resource. They didn't look at did the student actually answer the question. They marked it as a general English writing task. And that's another thing that the teacher doesn't know, all right? So you can't blame the teacher because the teacher doesn't know any better. Yeah, so that poor right. student is then at a disadvantage.